me show you a favorite painting that always brought back so many memories when I did one-on-one -on -one memory care painting sessions. Grab a mop brush and do back and forth strokes using light blue and white for a sky background and dry it. And then grab a large flat brush because we're going to paint a fence. This is just going to be a simple backyard fence so you could paint it whatever color you want, but I'm doing dark brown and tan. Using the flat edge of my flat brush, I'm just using the size or the width of the brush and doing downward strokes all the way across, spacing them out evenly. And then look what I'm doing. I'm taking a little bit of the tan and dark brown and very lightly, I'm barely touching the canvas as I do these strokes. I'm dry brushing on a little bit of the color to give it a wood grain texture. And then once you get all of the standing up posts, do one going all the way across and I'm gonna do two just to make sure it's sturdy to carry our cats. We're gonna paint three cats today. And the residents always love this because they would tell me stories of cats they had when they were growing up. But first let's paint some grass, taking a fan brush with dark and light green. I'm going to do upward strokes all the way across the bottom of my fence. I'm not going above that first line that goes all the way across but I'm going to do the texture alternating between dark green and light green using them both on my brush. And then I'm gonna take a detail brush and add some straggler grasses growing up a little bit further. I always like to use the fan brush first to get the thickness and then add some taller grasses, all different heights coming up from the thickness to give it more texture. Going to do that all the way across. The cats will love that. They love grass like that. And to paint our cats, we're going to use spouncer sponges, just round sponges on a stick. I'm gonna start with the large one and use black and white and press down and twist on the top of your fence where he might be sitting. That's the bottom of the cat. Now taking the medium pouncer, I'm gonna do the same thing, slightly overlapping on that large circle and do the head the same way. I'm gonna go back in with the large one to make it look like they're connected and that's an easy cat body. I'm gonna do that two more times, but I'm gonna do a yellow and white one now. Next to the black cat, I'm gonna press down and twist, but instead of doing the midsection on the top, he's gonna to be laying down, so I did it off to the right, and the head's going to be slightly off center on the right as well. There we go. Now this one is gonna be a gray one, and I'm going to do the same thing as the black cat, just in a different color. There, three cat bodies. You can go back over any of the circles that you need to using the same sponge. I'm even going to add a little bit of white to the bottom of my black cat. And then to really make them look like cats, we have to give them tails. So taking a size three round brush, I'm just going to pull a wavy line. You can have it twisting and turning however you want. Just make sure it's connected to the bottom by making it a little bit thicker coming out from the cat. I'm gonna make that a little bit thicker there. And then once you get the tails in, you can fix up the body however you want. I really like how the pouncer adds a little bit of texture to the cat, but I'm also going to add a little bit of highlighting with some white mixed in. Like with my gray here, I'm going to outline some of the body just to make sure it's defined. And you can't forget ears, so take a detail brush and the color that matches the cat, unless your cat has different ears, you could really make it your own, but add little tiny triangles coming off of the right and the left hand side of each of their heads. See how I have them slightly tilted to the side, not going straight up and down, like that. Now you could keep them plain, but think about your cat at home. If you have one, you can add some markings to these cats. So for example, I'm going to do a white tip with some white paint on the tail of my gray cat, and even take some white and add some little white smudges on his body and his head just to give him a little bit more character. I'm even going to add some on his tail, maybe some polka dots with white paint on my yellow cat. And how about for my black cat, I'll take a detail brush and add some white stripes. So the white is the theme, but each one has a separate personality. Like I mentioned, this was a favorite with the residents I taught in memory care. I would get so many memories out of them, so many stories about cats they had growing up. And we would put different details that they remembered from that cat in the painting. So that was so much fun. I'm even going to add some stripes on his tail. There we go, we're getting there. Now I do wanna add a little bit of light brown to the yellow cat. I feel like he needs a little bit of something. We're gonna add a couple patches in there as well. Fun fact, I had 14 cats growing up. I lived on a farm, we had a litter of kittens and I remember having to give them all away because we found out I was allergic. Uh-oh, but I love cats, I think they're cute. One tip on whiskers, do not, I repeat, do not use a detail brush. Use a fine tip pen or Sharpie to do whiskers if you do whiskers. 
I have tried to do detail brushes in classes and they always turn out so chunky. And this painting is so cute if you do them really, really thin like this. So be careful, unless you're really good at detailing. I am gonna take a detail brush and add a little bit of shading in some areas. Up to you how much detail you do. I'm also gonna add some flowers in the grass. I feel like we need more color. So I'm taking some pink and white and just tapping the side of the brush in three little sections. That's gonna give you a tulip-like shape that's really, really simple. Do them all different heights, all spaced out. And let's add some dark purple little lilac flowers. I'm just tapping my brush in a lilac shape up to a point. Space them out, not evenly, but spread them out so that there's color all throughout the bottom. And then taking a little bit of light purple, I'm going to add a couple dots in them as well for some highlighting. There we go, now it's looking pretty colorful. And once you get all your flowers in there, don't forget to add stems, taking a little bit of dark green, add a line going up to each of the flowers. And for final touches, I like to take an artist sponge with a little bit of white and add little tiny taps all across the bottom around the flowers. See how that ties everything in? And taking a marker or a paint pen, I'm going to add some birds. Let's give these cats something to look at. I wonder what they're thinking. Now I showed this to my husband and he said, why do the cats look like snowmen? You know, he's right. What you could do is you could smooth out where the two circles meet. You know that point between the two circles? Just make it a little bit smoother like that and it will look more like a body. Just do it on the bodies though. The heads look pretty much natural. With the residents, I usually kept the circles the way they were because it was just one more step. But you can add as much detail as you want with this one. It is so cute and so much fun. I can't wait to see how these turn out. And if you like this tutorial, follow me for more. Happy painting.